guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly, warm, worm community, you are in the right place. Today we're looking in on the Red Wigglers in the worm factory. And it's been about three weeks since we've looked in on these guys. And we have been trying to get this top level to finish up. And what I'm noticing is that it has started to dry out. So I'm gonna pick this dry part off the top before we make any serious evaluations. But I think, I think this is probably, with the exception of that top stuff, it's probably ready to harvest that and maybe an avocado shell. So the way that I go ahead and harvest this is to do the aggravation method. And that is to kind of fluff it up and then wait for the worms to dive down into the layer below. So I wanna make sure to get everything away from the corners. And the other layer that was fed recently is directly below here, so this should be an area they would like to go to. So I am going to fluff them up and then give them a little bit of time for them to sink down into the layer below. As these guys sink below, I'm going to be skimming off the top where it is free of worms. If there's, This is going to go into blue uh, to dry out the rest of the way so I can sift it, but any cocoons and whatnot will go into blue and will live heavily, happily ever after, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to grab a handful here. And I'm waiting about five to 10 minutes in between so that I give the worms a chance to dive down. Okay, get another handful here. And I'm just moving that off to the side. You can see there's a couple of cocoons in there. Those will go live with blue. Then I fluff it up and make sure that you're a little aggravated. And then they'll dive down and we'll give them another five minutes. Okay. And I am kind of sprinkling that onto the tray that I'm moving it to to make sure that if there are any worms that I've missed, like this little guy, I'm just gonna put them in a cup and return them to the, the ecosystem here. In reality, I could have waited another month, but it is throwing off my whole routine here, so they gotta go. I'm impatient, if nothing. So we're gonna get everybody fluffed back up again, kind of center it here. Make sure there's no hangers on in the middle. There's not really any holes right there at the edge, so I wanted to make sure that everything was having the ability to go down. All right, bring it back in five. All right, here we go. Pretty much the last of it. I'm not seeing a lot of worms here, maybe one or two. But it's about 60 degrees in the basement where this particular system is. And I was uh, rereading one of my worm books and it kind of just hit me that, you know, it's not all about the worms. I mean, I know I preach that all the time, but then, you know, I have my own epiphanies here and there that, you know, maybe it's not just the worms that are slowing down that's causing this system to not finish up as quickly. Maybe it is there's some sort of a, a point at which the microbes and the springtails and mites and everything that they aren't very active either. And so maybe it's not just, you know, red wigglers love 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but maybe the bin critters do not. Put your thoughts below. Maybe that's why things are slowing down.
All right, let's look at the layer below that was fed people food last time. Okay, here we are. And this looks really nice. Really good moisture in here. Seems like they've liked their pumpkin. You can see just the very lace-like leftovers from the skin of the pumpkin. And of course, that is one of the good things about having a sealed system like this. You don't lose the moisture like you do on uh, the open systems like Blue and the European Nightcrawlers. The moisture stays in here very nicely, which is totally a bonus for me here in the winter because with the furnace running nonstop, the moisture in most of my bins is very bad, but this is darn near ideal right there. Let me put those little extra worms that I picked out in this layer. And let's look and see what the next layers below are looking like. All right, this is from August. And if I'm not mistaken, this is where we had those avocado pits. And I'm just seeing very little left, just tiny little rem remnants. So we're still looking that it, it took about four months, maybe five months to get all of those avocados eaten and maybe even more. I mean, it's still going. There are still some of them in here. So I guess it's not totally done. But this is going to become the feeding tray now that the top tray was harvested. And this looks pretty good already, quite honestly. So we've got quite the mixed feeding for them today that we'll show you in a little bit as soon as we check out the rest of the layers. Okay, well this is our layer that I've been doing that kind of experiment with, with the shredded paper that's just hand shredded. And the only thing I've been putting down here is a little bit of grit. Last time, some people with some good eyes caught that I actually put azomite down here last time because I didn't have any grit handy. But they're doing a pretty good job. I mean, you can see that they're making castings even though this paper was not put through the, the shredder. But I'm gonna keep kind of hand shredding it every time that I come in here just to make sure that there's air in between and give them a little bit more opportunity, them and the uh, little bin critters that are in here, the opportunity to get some air and get them moving on this. But there's quite a few worms down here, quite honestly. So that's that's encouraging. You know, if your shredder breaks or you don't have a shredder or you just don't want to use the electricity to use that, you can absolutely just hand tear up any of this uh, cardboard like Amazon boxes or paper and the worms will still get to it. Yep. All right, you get back in there. I don't know, I kind of feel like I should continue giving them grit. Let me know your thoughts on that. I know they don't need that much grit, but maybe they need the nutrients. So this is the October bedding that we put in here in October. And this was just shredded cardboard. Nothing fancy, no accoutrement in here. We still do actually have worms that have come down here. I know that the system's supposed to work, you know, one way, but the worms kind of tend to do what they want. So being that it is getting to be that time of year, I'm gonna try and help them out and give them a little bit of grit in here, just to help them out. This is um, azomite. So it's more like vitamins and grit. But that's all they're getting. Now let's look at the very bottom tray that we started last time in November. This was the prepared bedding that I age for a week or so before I feed it to the worms. And this actually looks a little bit farther done than the tray we just looked at that is a month older. Interesting. You know, there's there really is something to be said for giving the worms a little bit of bacteria and that helps the whole digestion process. Although the worms are capable of eating things on their own, for the most part it's the shredders and the microbes that go ahead and eat things up before the worms get to it. So I, 
I know I don't normally put grit down here, I just leave it be paper, but I'm trying to help them out getting going a little faster because it is winter and it is only 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit here in the basement. All right, let's get this assembled and get them fed up. All right, this becomes the new feeding tray. This will be the first time that it has received any people food. I'm also gonna put all of the leftovers from the top up in there as well. So let's see what we've got here. It's a little frozen, but we've got onions, tea bags, some jalapenos. Tomatoes, more onions. I think those are yellow tomato skins. Avocado shell, pepper, it probably had blossom end rot on the, on the plant. That's always heartbreaking. But this is a really good feeding to start them off and any of this liquid will go down to the layers below and soak up into those layers and help them out. So it's not gonna completely drown this. It's got lots of places to soak up. All right, here we are back up at the top. This was previously the feeding tray, which is now going to become the chow layer. Now this is more close to what I usually use for um, worm chow. This is pureed grains and such. Uh, there is actually some chickpeas in here, some rice, some lentils, and as you're probably rightly saying, some of that is not super pureed. Well, that is the best my little coffee grinder can do, and I'm 100% sure that the worms will figure it out. So hopefully that is a, a good amount for them to keep them going for the next three or four weeks until we check in on them again. If you like this particular system in the tower. I have a playlist right over there and if you're just into worms and you want to see another video, YouTube thinks you're going to be interested in that video right over there. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day. In case you wanted to see the worms go hang out in blue, here they go. This is all the castings that we harvested from that top layer. So this will have a little bit more time and have a little bit more bin critters to help out because there's a lot more roly-polies and springtails and mites in here than there is in that tower system.